Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Um, the title is not clickbait. Um, and the reason I'm sharing this with you is to let you know that you're not going to be ready. And what I mean by that is um, when the power goes out and stays out, a lot of us have a lot of food in our fridges and our freezers and you know, I see a lot of, you know, chat on YouTube and stuff. People saying, well, I'm just going to can it. I'm going to do this to it. I'm going to do that to it. The reason I know you are not going to be ready, because it happened to me. And I was ready. And I wasn't ready. So what do I mean by that? Well, not this sun past Sunday. It was Sunday before. A little guy comes in and says, Mommy, the bread is not frozen in the freezer. So I go down there and I check. And everything else from the second shelf down and the door were all frozen. But the bread on top was thawed. So I thought the boys just left the freezer door open. You know how it frosts up in there? I thought they'd just done that. So I shut it. The next day, Monday morning, I went and checked on it again. And the next shelf was thawing it wasn't thawed it was thawing and I went oh my goodness the thermostat's out the, it's not working the light comes on but there's no cold air so I, I didn't I didn't anticipate that but I knew I had jars I just didn't know where they were so I, get, I told Jeremy, I said, for every jar you find, I'll give you a quarter. I don't care what size it is, as long as it's a canning jar. Because I save even store jars, because you can use those for other things. Well, he starts running around the house, running around our, the food sheds, run, running around our pantry. He's, he found me a hundred jars. He just bought himself an RC remote control car on Amazon <laughs> for 25 bucks. Anyway. I got all them canning jars. Most of them were the pints, but I had some quarts too. About 21 quarts, I think, and the rest were all pints. I started pulling the meat out of the freezer from the top down, and I started, I put the ground beef and the chicken strips. I have two other refrigerator freezers, so I reorganized those. I took stuff out that, we, that I could make for them for the week brought that upstairs in the refrigerator but the ground beef and the and the cut up chicken I put all that in in the downstairs freezer the refrigerator freezer but there was still a ton of meat you guys inside my stand-up freezer it's the tall stand-up one so I start pulling it all out and I had mostly hot dogs bratwurst um, sausage, Italian sausage, um, I had, uh, turkey, turkey sausage, turkey, um, kielbasa, chicken, um, uh, ground chicken, I had so much stuff, so I started pulling it out, and I started canning it, I was canning all last week, to try and save as much food as I could, I called on that Monday, I called Sears for someone to come out. They couldn't get here till Friday. So you're talking almost five days. So Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, five days. You guys, I canned like nobody's business. But I didn't just can. When I did the hot dogs, some of them I cut up in little coins. And I made like the chili meat sauce and red sauce. I canned it like that. I did the kielbasa, I cut it up, I canned it as though I was going to mix it with potatoes. Um, I made them meals. I made them an entree. Out of all the meats, I made entrees. Except the, the hot dogs and the Polish dogs, those I just um, canned alone so that they could just be hot dogs or Polish dogs, whatever. Had I not had the two other refrigerator freezers, where, which are totally completely full. So I had to pull out stuff to fit stuff. And that's what I did. But I had those two working. 
had I not had those two working and electricity was out there is no way I could have canned all that meat I don't keep a lot of frozen vegetables so I was good there I keep a lot of bread tortillas have a shelf life so you don't even have to put them in there but I do have quite a few quite a bit in the bottom sh pull out shelf but those I knew would be okay even if they thawed and the bread as well and I knew I could refreeze those the meat however there was such an abundance of all of the meats I said I, we don't buy a lot of steak and stuff like that but I did have two huge um, um, corned beef the you know the big big corned beef but I knew I was going to cut it up and make corned beef hash and can that so that's what I did I cut it all up I made cut up the potatoes seasoned everything and I canned it like that and I and I did I did corned beef hash and then I did I did the kielbasa I did a lot of stuff a lot of different things but as I'm doing all of that I'm thinking if I'm having this much trouble to can all this meat, I still had a refrigerate, two refrigerators to put the meat in so that I would have two, three days to can all the meat that I wanted to can. And I had the two freezers, you know, the top side to, re to keep frozen what I wanted to keep frozen. I still had an abundance of meat that I had to can. So, I still did not have enough jars. I still had to go to the Amish and get more jars. So if the electricity goes out, and say your vehicles don't work from an EMP, whatever, you're going to have to do all of that. And I say you are not ready because I experienced a small portion of that. And all I kept thinking was, oh my goodness, if I did not have these other two refrigerators and freezers, I would lose a lot of food. Because if there's no cold air, there's no cold air. Everything is cold. You have to can everything. So I wanted to share that with you so that you can be more prepared. Make sure you have enough jars. If you have a barbecue with propane, you can can on that. All my propane tanks are empty. We used them over the, over the winter. And I haven't been able to, to go and fill them up yet. I wish I had because the prices are going crazy. So when I say you're not going to be ready, you wait. Because even having two refrigerator freezers, I still could not have canned everything before it went bad couldn't have done it and my your freezers are probably just like mine full to the gills the other thing I wanted to talk to you about is the prices of repair it was just the thermostat I looked online and it was anywhere from 11 something to 15 something I was charged over well over four hundred dollars. And when the repair man was leaving we were outside talking and you know, I was, you know, talking about the price and everything and he said he goes, It's gonna get worse. Now they gave me a hundred and fifty dollar discount because I had a service plan. So I ended up paying two seventy seven or something like that. Well that's even a lot. But when I was talking to him, he said, he said, expect the prices of repairs to be a lot more. He said, he said, because it's going to start getting hard to get the parts and or, you know, for people to come out. He said that the inflation is going to make those prices skyrocket to fix appliances and stuff. Even if you have insurance, you still have so much you have to pay they pay for half you pay for half or whatever the percentage might be but when I was talking to him he was adamant that service prices are going to be astronomical 
So I wanted to share that with you. So if there's something you need to have fixed, you might want to get it fixed now and not wait another month or two. Because I think the prices are only going to go higher. So those are the um, two things that I wanted to talk about and hit on with you. And so that you can be prepared. You know, have all your jars all ready to go with the lids and the rings. Make sure you have enough lids and rings and make sure you, you know, you have enough jars. Go look through your freezers and see what you're going to want to can and in what order. Have it written down. It'd be a lot easier had I had everything written down than to just try and wing it and try and figure it out. So I, I took videos of it and stuff, but I cannot find the videos on the, the chip. They're not on the chip that I was using. So I, I couldn't even show you my freezer or any of that. But I have no reason to lie. I'd be kind of silly to lie at this point in the game, you know? So, I'm just sharing that with you. When all the electricity is out and none of your freezers are working, what order of steps are you going to take to get that food canned as fast as possible? Because I always thought, oh, I have enough jars. Oh, I can do this. I'm not even worried. You guys, I didn't, I... Five days he couldn't come out, and I was—I really—I didn't want to lose any of the food that I had. So you might want to get a plan together. That when that happens, what are you going to do? How are you going to can? How are you going to preserve your food? Okay. Well, that's what I wanted to talk to you about. Have a great day and shalom. Okay, I lied. One more thing. Okay, so you see this photo here? Look at how pretty those jars are up there on that shelf. Aren't they, weren't they pretty? All nice and neat, stacked really nice on that shelf. And here's another photo. Don't they look nice? You can see everything you have and, and all that. Well, it's coming. Isn't it like a shaking or something? you think those shelves are safe like that? If you have your shelves like that, you might want to change the way you have them. Because in this photo, this is a jar that fell and broke. They're going to fall off the shelf and break. You're going to lose a lot of your food in jars. And the jars. Because the next thing coming is going to shake. Okay? Now... When you get your jars, don't throw them boxes away. And I got this little tip from, um, gosh, I wish I could remember her name. I think it's Bear something or Prexar Bear. Or, anyway, she says when you open up these boxes of jars, just cut around the edge of the glass, the, the, the rim of the, of the top of the, of the um, box, and take that off. But leave the plastic around the whole thing because... If, you know, you spill something or what have you, that plastic is going to protect that box from getting wet. Okay? That was a really good tip that, that I got. So, now I just cut around the edge and take the plastic off the top and I put my jars in there. And it's better to store your jars in a box together than it is singly because it's less of a chance of them falling off the shelf. Okay? And then you should be canning all that you can can as much as you can can right now and I know a lot of the reasons are because well we're my family's eating the food da 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 but we're getting really close we don't know when this is going to happen um but better better you buy food weekly or bi-weekly and get a lot of that food canned than to lose it okay unless you have <clears throat> other means of keeping your food you know, lots of ice and stuff, and, you know, so just, just, you know, be careful. And then this next photo, you see the, um, you see that wooden shelf, 
And look at all the braces are on there to keep those jars from falling off. That's perfect. That's amazing. You want to do that if you can. So if you have wooden shelves, you want to do that. You want to put those braces in there so they could stop the jars from falling off. And maybe get a piece of cardboard and put in between each, each row of jars so that, and then also the opposite direction because when it shakes, they're going to hit against each other, you know? So, just something to think about. And then, my, see these racks? That's how my cans are right now. They're on racks like that. I have canned goods from the store and the cans underneath the, them so that I can actually stack, stack two rows. And I put my canning jars on top of those store-bought cans. You can't do it the other way around, but you can put your canning jars on top of store canned foods. Okay? So, I use those racks and... When I used to buy them for my catering business in Costco, they came with the um, with the outer, you know, protector thing. But when you get them here in Missouri, they don't come with those. And um, this next picture, they have a lot of all the food in the jars and in the in the boxes, which is great. If you can't get the um, um, if you can't put the braces on, at least keep them in the box because it's a lot harder for an entire box to fall off the shelf than it is without the box, okay, or you know what I mean, it's better to have them in the box because it's harder for them to fall out when they're in the box, and this is just another photo showing how loose the jars are, when that shaking comes, I would bet all of that's going to come down, now if you run out of canning lids, you can buy that, I think it's called paraffin wax or whatever, and all you do is melt it, Pour it on top of the food. It won't go down. It'll stay on top. And then can. And that wax, when you're done, you take them out very carefully out of your canner. And that wax will seal your food underneath it. I have not tried this method, but if, I'm sure if you go look on YouTube, there's a lot of people that have done this method. So um, you might want to look at some videos and get this wax if you can't find lids and just have it ready so that, you know, just have it in your arsenal. It's a good thing to have. Okay, now I'm done. Alright. Be safe. Be blessed. Shalom.